What's up everyone, Vu of Envil Films, back with another video, and I am not quitting YouTube. That thumbnail was completely clickbait, come on now, all this time you guys should know that YouTube thumbnails are always clickbait to get you to click on the video, and mine is no different. Regardless if the video contains the subject matter of the thumbnail or not. But today I will discuss YouTubers quitting. I don't know if you noticed, but as of late, there's been multiple different YouTubers from different genres of YouTube video tube douchery that posted video about them quitting and stating the reasons why they are quitting. And not to say that I don't try to be as myself as possible in front of this Sony YouTuber D-Bag ZVE1 camera, I would say that I present a version of my authentic self, but not the full-fledged version of my authentic self. And I do present myself as I'm talking to a camera and not a person uh, in a way. And I'm going to try my very best going forward to talk to you guys as if we were sitting at a bar or at the dinner table and then I was just having a conversation with you because to have a YouTube channel and to be fortunate enough to have more than a thousand subscribers, I want you guys, my subscribers, to subscribe to me because of me and not because of how I'm presenting myself in the 30 minutes of me sitting here in front of the camera. Now, going back to what I was trying to discuss, I was trying to discuss why these YouTubers are quitting and when I first saw these, I'm just like baffled. Like why would YouTubers with over 100,000 subscribers, 1 million, 2 million subscribers quit? One would think that having a job such as being a YouTuber where you just get to create content on your camera on what I assume your own time and make a really good living out of. I mean, literally being sent things for quote unquote free to possibly make a YouTube video review or being sent to a different area in the world to create content for brands and getting paid by these brands, you would think that that is the life. And even the YouTubers themselves always present like, I quit my job to become a YouTuber, a content creator, a YouTube D-bag, a tube doucher. I quit the cubicle life. I stopped pushing papers, you know. I got away from the corporate prison to be able to do these, to be able to create my own content in my own time and do things the way I wanna do. And hey, they were able to be successfully do what they wanna do if they are having over 100,000 subscribers. I mean, to me, uh, that is a pretty good following of uh, subscribers and I would, Honestly, if I had 100,000 100, subscribers, I'll be elated. I mean, it took me since 2017 to get up to, what is it, 27,000 uh, subscribers at the time of posting this video. And I have posted like 600 videos plus. And the vast majority of YouTubers out there that has posted not even 600 videos yet have at least like 100,000 plus subscribers. It's just... Clearly my personality is lackluster um, and you know, just as in real life as it is here, I don't have many friends. But the friends that I do have appreciate me for who I am and I appreciate them for who they are and I just don't mind keeping that way. It's all about quality and not quantity in terms of like friendships that I have and I guess in this case, YouTube subscribers. So. To all, of you, to all of those select few that have subscribed to me, I greatly appreciate it. I always thought that these YouTubers love what they're doing. This was their passion. You know, they got to create content. They got to use their cameras. They got to be creative, the whole nine yards. So why would they up and quit? Why in the world did they quit? And the only thing that I could think of was they didn't like doing it anymore. Because if you are passionate about something, if you love something, you would never quit doing it. Take, for example, Tom Brady. Tom Brady, the greatest NFL quarterback of all time. We can argue about it if we're not, we, we want to, but 
he is widely regardless as being the best or one of the best NFL uh, players of all time. And he would have never quit playing football if it wasn't because he is getting old and you cannot keep taking a beating. And even after quitting, he's going to start doing broadcasting for NFL football games. So he's still staying in it. Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, they are both retired. Peyton Manning is probably the other quarterback, I would say, that could you know go up against Brady in terms of like one of the best NFL players of all time. He wouldn't have quit playing football if it wasn't for his old age, injuries, etc. He would never have quit. But he still, but he is still involved in the NFL, whether it be participating, whether it be doing stuff at the Pro Bowl, whether it be doing stuff on TV, he is still involved in the NFL. So if, in my opinion, if you're really passionate about something, if you really love doing something, you would never quit unless it was something extreme enough, such as being old or injured, where you can't do it anymore. So in my opinion, these YouTubers didn't like what they're doing anymore. And what they had been doing on their YouTube channel was the exact thing that they quit to start doing their YouTube channel in the first place. They had become corporate. They started creating content for someone else, something else, and not creating content for themselves. They were making content based on what they thought others wanted to see from them, brands, whatever company they're working with and not making content that they want to truly express. So you go onto this YouTube douchebag list of YouTube douchebaggery and you will see a bunch of characters. They, what you see on your phone, what you see in your TV screen, computer, whatever it is you're watching YouTube content on, these are characters. These people you see aren't truly showing you who they are, and they're also not saying truly what they're thinking. They are saying and being what they have to be to suit the corporate image, to, to, to present the image that these brands want to work with. And to convince you, the viewer, to buy whatever it is they're selling for them to make money. And it's not right or wrong. It is literally just how the world works. How you make money is, whether you think it or not, you're somewhat misleading your consumer. When you go out to a job interview, are you truly who you are in front of the interviewer? Most likely not you have to somewhat mislead that person in front of you to, to, to make the person think that you're gonna be the greatest employee on the planet. And that person who's interviewing you is misleading you into thinking that the place they're, they're trying to get a job at is the greatest place to work on the planet, which is not true. Name the brand, Apple, Starbucks, whatever. Uh, marketing is all about misleading you into buying things and investing in things, investing in things that you don't need at all. They mislead you into wanting things. They mislead you into spending money. It's, it's, uh, it's just capitalism. It's just the way things are. You know, you see a poster of a, of a McDonald's burger and it looks really good. And then when you actually buy that burger, it doesn't look like that picture, right? Because that picture they took, I don't even know if that's real meat. It is probably fake meat, it's a fake burger. Real burgers don't look like that, so they mislead you into thinking that the burger you're gonna get is gonna look as good as that, when it doesn't. So, um, so what I've been seeing is that original, normal, average dude YouTubers, such as myself, are coming onto their YouTube channel to become a character, to become a corporate figurehead to become a corporate spokesperson for whatever brand that is willing to send them free stuff, sponsor them, you know, to do whatever. But then you see actual famous people already, actual accomplished 
public figures out there coming onto YouTube to be able to be themselves, okay? Uh, let's go, going back to sports, you see guys like Stephen A. Smith, who has an ESPN show, who I would say is really good at being his real self on ESPN, but he also has a podcast and YouTube content where that is him being truly himself. You have athletes like Cam Noon, quarterback for Carolina Panthers, Richard Sherman, cornerback for the 49ers and the Seattle Seahawks. Um, a slew of ex-NFL players may have TV personalities, Robert Griffin III, RG3, um, or not. And they have their own podcasts and YouTube channels where they are truly themselves on their YouTube content. Whereas on ESPN, on NFL Network, whatever, they are presenting like a corporate version of themselves to be more presentable in this corporate TV show. With regards to Cam Newton, he has his own YouTube channel, podcast, whatever, and he's just completely himself. He cusses, he says, you know, the N-word, you know, he's a black dude, so he says the N-word on his YouTube channel, and he's truly himself on there. And main, the main reason why he's doing this is because one, he already has a bunch of money, so he doesn't need to get paid by ESPN, but he wants to be able to express himself as who he truly is instead of putting on a shirt and tie and put up this corporate image that the mainstream society, the mainstream media has groomed everyone on this planet to think that that is how prop, that is the correct way to be, that is the proper way to be. And um, it's bullshit. Back to why these YouTubers are quitting, they're quitting because they're no longer authentic. They're quitting because they are, they're quitting because they're tired of lying. They're quitting because they're tired of acting. They're quitting because they're disappointed in themselves for not meeting certain goals. You know, maybe they're inside there competing with a fellow YouTuber or whatever, and they see this person getting six, seven, eight million views, and they see this other guy getting like six, seven, eight million subscribers, and they're getting only like a million, and it's taking them forever to get to two million, and they're just like, you know what? I don't feel like doing this anymore because they've been doing it for the wrong reasons. They've been doing it um, uh, to make money. They've been doing it to satisfy sponsorships. They've been doing it to, to, to work with brands. But at the end of the day, when you're working for someone else, you literally sold a part of yourself um, to someone else. I get it. You know, I'm not a big YouTuber. I recently started getting, you know, sponsorship offers, you know, pretty much just like small dollar quote unquote sponsorships to have me say, uh, make do an ad read you know, on like this YouTube channel. Let's say I'm talking about something and then all of a sudden it's like, hey guys, by the way, this video is sponsored by whatever. And uh, the one brand reached out to me and I was excited. I was happy at first. I was like, great, you know, like, you know, now I'm gonna be able to, you know, make some money um, that's not commission related in terms of like selling something you know, on affiliate links. It's, it's I'm gonna make money. Um, brands are gonna just pay me to, to support their products. and. I would never come on here and and recommend something or or quote unquote someone perceive as me trying to sell something if it wasn't something that I truly think is a good product and something that I actually use on my own. Now, in this case, yeah, the service that the sponsor, the service that the brand uh, provides, uh, I use. I just don't use that often. I use like a different service more often, but I do pay for the service as well. But I didn't have a problem doing it. I don't have a problem presenting it um, because I use it and I think it's a good product. Is it the greatest product? No, but it's definitely usable. And I feel that it will be great benefit for a lot of my viewers uh, to use this particular product and that I think it's okay for me to come up on my YouTube channel and talk about it. The one thing I had issue with, with was, one, they wanted to review what I was saying before I posted the video. And two, I started feeling pressure. I started feeling pressure that if 
I don't do a good job with this ad read and I don't get the views that this brand wants to see, if I don't get the signups that this brand probably wants to see, then my relationship with the brand will probably not continue, which means they would probably think that, you know, my channel is not strong, my content's not strong enough, and that I am not a good candidate for them to continue to collaborate and do other paid, you know, other paid uh, sponsorships, you know, in the future, and that I was only going to get this one opportunity, and then that's it. And it's not a good feeling. You know, I struggled to find a way to create this video that, to create the ad read, to create the video and the ad read to my satisfaction. And by my satisfaction is by me presenting it as real as possible. Pretty much, it's almost as if somebody came over to me and said, hey, Vu, I am looking for a certain product to do this certain thing. Do you have any recommendations? And I was just like, well, this, this site is good, blah, blah, blah. They're offering this, this, that, and the other. And, you know, I think it'll probably be a good bet. I just kind of really casually presented it. Um, and that's the way I was comfortable with. And I actually did not send it out to review because I wanted to present it the way that I saw it and the way that it was presented to me through, you know, the websites and all that stuff. And I thought it was, a, that was as far as I go, you know. Long story short, will I be getting additional sponsorship offers from this brand? Probably not. And I'm completely fine with that because I don't want to feel that way. You know what I mean? Like, if you want me to talk about your product, your brand, or whatever it is that you're offering, one, it has to, it has to be actually good. I actually have to think that this product is good and worth the money, regardless if I actually use it or not. Okay? So... All because I have certain opinions on gear or products, um, it doesn't disallow you, the viewer, to have your own opinion. Like all because I don't like a particular lens doesn't mean that that lens it does not work perfectly fine for you. It is just me presenting my own opinion, and then I want you to make an informed decision on what I'm saying. That's why, like, you don't see me doing, like, in-depth reviews where I'm, like, looking at, like, chromatic aberration, doing all these charts and graphs, because I don't like doing that stuff. Um, I like going out there and shooting. I like going out there filming. I like going out there and trying out stuff. And I learn that way. I figure out if I like things that way. Hands-on experience. And that is what I try to give the viewers. Um, and I don't want you to solely rely on my opinion, on how I feel about things, because a lot of those things are subjective. I think that my opinion is valuable because I do this stuff for a living and that you should also do additional research, looking at specs, maybe watching some of the other more in-depth uh, YouTubers and content creators out there, and then make your decision off of that. You should never make your decision off of just one person's opinion only. We are living in a world that is increasingly hard to figure out what is real what is fake, what is authentic, what is bullshit. I mean, I pretty much just repeated the same thing, but you get what I'm saying, you know? The people you see in the media, um, clearly, everyone has an agenda. But now, if you have YouTubers who, where you're in this place, you know, on their personal channels, and you're not even sure if they are being honest, if they are being true, if they are being legitimately unbiased about stuff, that's a problem. Um, and then you have stuff like AI, where you go through and look at photos and even now videos, and you're not exactly sure if those are real or not. People posting things up that's saying this is their work, and you have no idea if that is their work. It's a problem. I mean, I've come across these random YouTube shorts, IG Reels, where, I don't know, this guy, he puts up a photo of some guy, you know, he's really jacked up, disfigured face, and he's like, this man was a deadly serial killer back in the 1890s or whatever. And then you're like, oh, dang, like, what is this? So then... 
piques my interest. I go to Google, I research and stuff. And then I realize it's just a picture of a guy with some medical disorder where his face uh, was jacked up like that. And he was not a serial killer at all. I'm like, why would someone make content trying to depict something as being real, true, nonfiction, um, and just outright lot just outright lie about it um, just for views. Like people are actually just talking shit on social media, just making up lies on social media and making people believe that it is true. And yeah, um, if I didn't find it fascinating, I would never have researched it and I would never have figured out that it is true or not. But there's a lot of people who are probably just scrolling through IG Reel, looking at this dude's disfigured face and then thinking, wow, that guy was a serial killer. And they just scrolled on with their life, you know. Then they go tell their friends, oh, you know, there's a guy, has, you know, he's a disfigured dude and like he was a serial killer back in the 1890s or whatever. And next thing you know, there's this whole story about this guy with his disfigured face, but that story was not real at all based off of just some D-bag, YouTuber, content creator, just making up shit. And that is, you know, this is just one example, you know? So what percentage of social media content you watch is actually real or not? Are these just actors? You know, like, where do you draw the line? And so, you know, it, it is my personal, like, goal, if you want to call it that, is to create stuff that I want to create. What I like about this whole thing is just the lighting and everything that I do here. And I like to express myself. I like to voice my opinion. I like to talk about things that are going in on my head and share it with people who may or may not understand it. And I'm going to assume a lot of you understand it. That's why you're subscribed to me. But that's the whole point of my channel, you know? If I'm gonna like talk about products it just comes with the territory because I'm a videographer. So gear and stuff is just part of the job. And if I come across stuff, if I come across gear that I think is worthwhile, I'll talk about it. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a worthwhile buy if you're a videographer like myself. I'll recommend it, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm not gonna sit here and be, you know, a character to to uh, to appease a brand and to be trapped in this corporate cycle. You know, I've been there, done that, man. I was accountant for ten years, and I worked for like three different companies. And each time I interviewed for those companies, I presented myself like this corporate d bag who loves accounting and will be the best employee for their company. And they would tell me that this is the best company to work for. And I did not believe them in one, and I did not believe them one bit. And I was not mad that they were lying to me because I lied to them about myself to get the job because I needed to make that paycheck to buy shit that I wanted, to do things on the weekend that I actually wanted to do and to not look like a bum. I needed the job, plain and simple. And now that I have the opportunity to work for myself, being a videographer and being a YouTuber with my own YouTube channel, I am not about to live that bullshit life, okay? My goal is to be real and authentic and not have to act like a character in front of you. Hopefully this means additional let me show you content that goes possibly beyond camera gear um, because there's just a lot of bullshit out there that I would just love to call out um, and make fun of. Also, if you have watched this far, I'm sorry that I have not produced like a bunch of let me show you videos lately is because, you know, when I first started doing those things, ideas came to me like that. And as soon as the idea came to me, I filmed it and I posted it. It's not like I script these things. It's literally, I have an idea, you know, some things go through my mind and then I just execute it 
I do it. It's literally, I think about it, I film it, I post it, and it all happens within like an hour. As of late, I haven't really like come up with something or something didn't just come up to me naturally to do a let me show you video, which is why I haven't done it. I'm not going to sit there and like, okay, I gotta do a let me show you video. It's a long time, let's try to figure something out. It doesn't work. And then to me, when I execute it, I don't think it's funny. And I've done that before, and a lot of you guys say it's funny, but to me, it wasn't funny, so I was just like, okay, if they think it's funny, it's great, but I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And the way I'm gonna do it is, anytime something comes up, and I think it's worthy of a let me show you video, and that I just come up with the idea out of the blue, I'll do it. Um, and hopefully, now that I am more open to opening it beyond just videography and like YouTube stuff, uh, hopefully there'll be more diverse type of let me show you content going forward. Um, I really don't know what got me to post this video, but I guess I'll end it by saying, you know, you guys watching a lot of YouTube and stuff, just be careful of who you are listening to and who you are paying attention to. Um, I think I've gotten a point in my life, I'm 40, <laughs> And I've been doing this YouTube stuff long enough. And I worked for a marketing firm doing, being a videography director. So I understand some aspects of marketing. Know when someone is being authentic and just talking to you about something. And know when someone is trying to trick you, mislead you, and try to sell you something. And there's way too much of that stuff going on. And, and you might get tricked into buying stuff, you know, that is actually trash and everyone's presenting it like it's legit good stuff. Like every Insta360 action camera that is released, never buy that stuff. Um, it's all YouTuber D-bag hype. Um, but I hope I don't seem like I try to sell stuff to you guys. I probably do more trashing of products that I do try to sell them. Um, I actually don't even try to sell my own product like my videography I do a lot of wedding videography um, that's probably my biggest source of income out of all my videography work and I don't even try to sell myself that way I just try to I just literally have a website I throw all my videos on there and if the client watches those videos and they think it's good and I hop on a call with them and if they seem like nice people and the pricing works for them I book and I work you know, I don't sit there and, you know, tell them, oh, I'm a award-winning videographer. I have a YouTube channel. I do this, do that. No, I just say, hey, look, uh, this is my process. I try to do this. Um, this is the price, you know. And I actually don't even talk to the customer too much. I don't really ask them about their life. I don't try to learn. I don't, I don't try to tell them that I want to learn more about them. So I want to like, ask them some questions because I did that in the beginning and I didn't learn anything about the couple that day. I just learned what they wanted to present to me. I learned everything about the couples on the day of their wedding. I watch, I observe, I film them interacting with their friends and family. I film them interacting with each other. And that's how I learn about them. I cannot learn about somebody just asking them questions for half an hour to an hour uh, and thinking that I'm gonna be able to create some type of uh, unique, um, strong, story-driven wedding film by chit-chatting with people for half an hour. I need to spend time with them and there's no better time than that than an eight hour wedding. So, very random video, but uh, if you watched this far, I greatly appreciated it. Um, again, if you for some reason liked what I presented here, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll, and I'll continue to post content about stuff videography, photography, and whatever up that whatever else that comes up in my life um, in an authentic fashion. And as always, until next time, lighten up. Hey man, what you doing? Checking out my Instagram account. Oh my god, Instagram, it trat. It don't let you monetize your video. Oh, for real? Good thing I have a YouTube channel. What your YouTube name? YouTube.com at Envu Films. Oh, I watch your YouTube already. It trat. Why is that? You don't read spec sheet when you do review?
You don't smile for no reason. You're not sponsored by Storyblock or Squarespace. Bro ain't trying to be like anyone else. You have no subscribe. You make no money. How much you make? Let me show you. Bro, that's like three cents American. How are you gonna buy new flip-flops with that? You got your pinky toe hanging out on the small ass flip-flops? It does style. If you want pedicure like mine, visit butt and hole full nail and musha. Pedicure and happy ending, only $29.99.